Well, hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Jeep Airs Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And look at those clouds over there. You know, winter just stepped back in on us again. Sorry I didn't shoot yesterday. Uh, it was windy, but that wasn't the main reason. The main reason was I went down to the OC to visit my friend Bill. And uh, just didn't have time to shoot a video. Spent the whole day with Bill. We had some fun. We uh, had some good food, some good talk, some laughs, and uh, well, now it's time to get back into things. So, the general consensus is that um, cinder block is probably the best way to build, but I have to do some estimates on that because uh, it's about, I just roughly say $2 a block. Well, I got to figure out how many blocks will cover a um, 32 square foot area. And uh, then once I've got that figured out, that'll tell me what the difference between buying block or buying plywood is going to be. So. You know, well, if it takes 60 block, I don't think it will. Um, I'm thinking more along the lines for 4x8 would probably be uh, 5 times 6. Probably be 30 blocks, so that's 60 bucks. Yeah, it's about the same price as a sheet of plywood. Uh, but a sheet of plywood builds faster. But then again, with the block, I don't need 2x4s under it and I don't need siding over it. So, you know, I think it might just come out cheaper to do, do it in cinder block. And then with a guest house out of cinder block that's not used very often, um, if I put enough cabinetry into it uh, for the little kitchenette, I can use it to store food because it should stay pretty um, well climate adjusted inside of there with the uh, cool in the summer, warm in the winter. So we'll see. Anyway, just a thought down the line. So the winds are blowing again today. Clouds are all the way around and it's chilly. And it was really chilly this morning, but right now it's chilly. And go, oh, I gotta close this door. Anyway, the, uh, the other thing is, uh, there's five days, including today, there's five days left in this contest. So get your entries in. We have 316 entries as of the beginning of this video. So that's quite a, a, a few entries. So um, doesn't matter because the randomizing software that I have, I just press one button and it takes... Uh, less than a second for it to pull one name out of the hat. So that'll be the way it'll go. All right, I've had a, a few questions and comments about my solar system and that stuff. And I've got some new people out there that have joined in that are going to be going off grid pretty soon. So let me cover a few other things in here. Okay, one was about the uh, uh, dump load system here that I have. Okay, these are hard to find now. Nobody sells them anymore. They're not really a, a, a top selling item. Everybody's gone to digital diversion units. And the digital diversion units are uh, a lot more efficient. And well, I've got, the way I did mine was, what happens is when the batteries reach a certain voltage that's set into the controller, the controller will activate the solenoid and make a connection inside which will take power from the batteries and send it to a heating element and the heating element will disperse the extra electricity bringing the batteries back down well this hardly ever goes on anymore since I got a midnight controller and what that tells me is that uh, the midnight controller is so efficient that it keeps those batteries from ever getting overcharged even though 
there's a wind turbine putting power in. That thing detects the, what's going on with the batteries and adjusts it so that I don't go into overages. I think I've only seen this thing kick on once since uh, I got that new midnight. And I think I, it might have even been me pressing the button. I don't know. But uh, hardly ever runs anymore. But I did connect um, one of these CPU fans to the base of it. And I connected it to the same two wires that activate the solenoid. So when the system turns on, the fan turns on and blows cool air, sucking it up from down low where the cooler air is, and blows it past this and past this and keeps both of them cool. Because these things can get hot if they stay uh, locked together. It's a, just an electromagnetic switch, basically. And when that thing goes on, it's pulling a lot of electricity to do it, so it heats up. So if I were you, uh, forget about getting one of these. I have it, so I'm using it. But forget about it now. Just get yourself uh, uh, either a midnight controller to run your uh, turbine. I know they're expensive, but well worth it. You can adjust the charge curve uh, inside the uh, in the control of the midnight to get the best efficiency out of your turbine. So it's really worth it to go that way. With this thing, all you're doing is uh, cycling the batteries from overcharge to pulling power off of them until they're down back to undercharge and then charging them back up again. So you're cycling them back and forth. But um, that's not really that bad because batteries need to be cycled. If you're not cycling your battery, if you're not using power out of your batteries, you're actually hurting them. So you do want to make sure that uh, you, you do use them. Just like uh, your car battery. If you put a, a battery in your car and then park the car for a year, when you go in there, the battery's going to be dead. All right? So you, you've got to get in there and start the car up and turn the radio on, turn the headlights on, things like that every now and then. It's, uh, the batteries are made to be used. They're not made to sit on shelves. They have a shelf life. Even the guys that sell batteries, if they're on the shelf for a certain period of time, they go back to the battery company. They don't, they don't stay there and get sold after that period of time. Same thing with your food. They put a sell-by date on it, right? All right. So this is what's going on right now. And it's uh, about uh, 5.30, quarter to 6 right now. And this is what I've got in my battery. So See that the watts and the amps are down to nothing because I'm in the float stage. My batteries are fully charged. I've got stuff running inside the cabin, but I'm not um, dropping my batteries down anything. And I was asked, what, ha what do I have in the mornings when I first get up? Well, before I put the aims in, when I was using a power jack, uh, in the mornings, well, in the summertime mornings, and the winter was different, in the summertime mornings, I get up and I'm seeing 12.4 to 12.6 on my batteries, which is basically a full battery. And that's been running the refrigerator and some lights and the cameras and that stuff all night long on this battery bank. It's, it's holding up for all of that stuff. Uh, I don't watch TV all night long and I don't fall asleep with a TV on. I'm a strong believer that... Uh, Bedtime is bedtime. You don't go to bed and, make, and put noise, radio, TV, uh, any type of lights. You want it dark and quiet in your room. That's where you get your best sleep and your best rest. And uh, you can check that with specialists. They'll tell you, yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, you don't want lights or noise in your bed. But, well... I can't say you don't always want noise in your bed because there are... Uh, let's skip that. All right. <laughs> oh, I see. You all know where I was going with that, don't you? So anyway, that's uh, that, that midnight right there has got to be one of the best investments I ever made. And right now, my um, solar panels out there, the big ones that I just added, that's the only thing connected to this. I'm putting out 107 volts, 13.7 uh, volts in the batteries. Right now, watts are in the 30s and only uh, 4 amps. 
kilowatt hours saved for the day, uh, 1.7 kilowatt hours, and uh, and I'm on float. And it it's weird, but uh, I've got a lot more electricity since I put this unit in because my I get up in the morning now and I check my batteries, and I'm up there at uh, 13.7 to I mean I mean 12.7 to 13. So 12.7 12, to 13, and then as soon as the sun comes up, as soon as the sun gets over the horizon to where you can see the full circle of the sun, I'm already up at 13, 4, 13, 3, 13, 4, and then by 7.30, quarter to 8, I'm, I'm on float. So yeah, I love this new setup. Uh, definitely got the power that I need to run the things I need to run. I also added a CPU fan here, which pulls heat away from these units. And I add one here, which pulls cool air into the room. Because when the door is closed in on this thing, there's, there's really no windows on here. There's just some vents in the wall behind the door up there. And uh, the... Um, the room gets pretty warm. So with the war room pretty warm in here, I don't want to damage any of the electronics and that stuff. They want five inch clearance all the way around this thing for airflow. That's why I moved it out and I, I built a longer, bigger shelf on here to get it out. Now I've got it probably seven inches from the uh, wall, which is a much better setup. This little fan here is for those days when it gets up to 116 degrees. I just got two little alligator clips on there. I click, click one to a positive, one to a negative, and turn that on, and that is a turbo fan, blows air right up at the back of this where the heat sink is, and cools it down. The uh, Midnight actually has its own built-in little fan. That's what this turbo up here is. There's a fan in there, and it takes the heat out and blows it out of there. And then this fan helps pull it away even more. So. It keeps things cool. Very important. In the winter, you want to keep your electronics warm. In the summer, you want to keep your electronics cool. So make sure you uh, plan for that when you're putting your system together. I notice I got three vented holes here. I've got a couple above the door up there. That's because I'm using flooded lead acid batteries and flooded lead acid batteries put off fumes that are actually a flammable gas. So you want to be able to vent that stuff out of here. So that's what that that's all about. And uh, if I had lithium batteries in here, I'd actually have to run a heater for the winter time because lithium does, does not like freezing cold. And I'm in the desert and people think the desert's always hot. No, the desert is very cold at times. So remember all of that, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to wrap this up and get it posted. Um, I got might have somebody coming by tonight. So, got to get things put together, get things closed up, and go have a cold one inside because it's a cold one out here. This is G-Beard saying don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, please. We need to get that subscriber up to 5,000. So let's go for it. G-Bear signing off.